Hello, welcome to this presentation. This is a presentation on descriptive psychopathology. And this would be the outline of the presentation. And at the end, we can go through five multiple choice questions based on the presentation. Some information about myself. I'm a consultant psychiatrist based in Chennai in India. I worked for many years in the United Kingdom. Uh, descriptive psychopathology is also called phenomenology. It refers to the description of abnormal states of mind. It is primarily concerned with conscious experiences that are reported by the patient and with the behavior that is observed by the psychiatrist or other professional. Carl Jaspers, a German psychiatrist and philosopher, is considered generally as the pioneer of descriptive psychopathology. He authored the most important textbook in this topic. And remarkably, he completed this when he was only 28 years old. The 100th anniversary of its publication was commemorated in major psychiatry journals in 2013. This highlights how important this textbook is. There are other types of psychopathology, experimental psychopathology and psychodynamic psychopathology, but this presentation is on descriptive psychopathology, which is the type of psychopathology that has maximum relevance for the clinical field of psychiatry. We now move on to disorders of speech. We will be covering pressure of speech, flight of ideas, thought block, circumstantiality, over-inclusive thinking, loosening of association, Neologism, verbal perseveration, echolalia, mutism, and clang association. I have included disorders of the form of speech also in this section, though some people might include disorders of the form under thought disorder as well. In pressure of speech, there is an increase in the rate of speech. So the patient would be seen to be talking much faster than usual. And this is characteristic of mania. In flight of ideas, the patient while talking moves quickly from one subject to another. If you look closely, you can find that there is some connection between successive topics. And this is also a feature of mania. Thought block presents as a sudden interruption in mid-sentence when the patient appears to go blank. 
So the patient would be answering a question and almost in mid-sentence he or she will suddenly stop and then they will resume from where they had left off. And when asked what happened, the patient might say that their mind just went blank. Thought block is typically seen in schizophrenia. In circumstantiality, the patient's answer to a question includes unnecessary information that might obscure the main issue, but the patient does eventually answer the question. So this might be termed as beating about the bush. And this is a feature of OCD. And it possibly reflects the patient's anxiety that they do not want even the smallest bit of information from being left out, even though that might not be of interest to the other person. In over-inclusive thinking, which is seen in uh, schizophrenia, the patient is unable to maintain conceptual boundaries. In loosening of association, the patient's speech might appear similar to flight of ideas, but whereas in flight of ideas, there is some connection between successive sentences that the patient is saying. In loosening of association, the patient moves from one topic to another and there is no logical connection between successive ideas. It is also called night move thinking, uh, ref referring to the chess piece night which moves at right angles. It's also called derailment or tangential thinking. And this is characteristic of schizophrenia. In neologism, the patient either invents a new word or the patient uses an existing word in an idiosyncratic manner. And this is also a typical feature of schizophrenia. Verbal perseveration refers to a repetition of words or phrases that have lost their initial relevance. So it includes palilalia, where the patient keeps repeating the last word or logoclonia, where the patient keeps repeating the last syllable. In echolalia, the patient repeats the speech of the interviewer. In mutism, there is total loss of speech, and this is seen in catatonia. In clang association, the associations between successive ideas are based on their sound. I have given an example. This is seen in mania and it includes punning where you use different words that sound the same and rhyming. We now move on to affect and mood. They are related concepts, but they have uh, some distinguishing features. Mood refers to a sustained and pervasive emotional state, whereas affect refers to a much short-lived emotional state. For assessing mood, subjective history is crucial, whereas affect is assessed objectively during the interview. So mood is subjective whereas affect is objective. Uh, some terms used to describe mood include and these are terms that the patient might use being sad which might reflect underlying depression being afraid might reflect 
an underlying uh, paranoid fear or might reflect an anxiety disorder being over the moon where if they are abnormally happy or elated might reflect an underlying mania uh, similarly for affect uh, a euthymic and reactive affect uh, refers to a normal affect incongruous affect where uh, uh, what the patient is saying and the emotions that they are exhibiting seem incongruous is a feature of schizophrenia for example the patient might be saying about something tragic in their life and might seem to be giggling at the same time if negative symptoms are prominent it is characterized by a flat effect that the patient has little or no emotional reactivity a labile effect is a characteristic feature of mania where the patient might seem very happy but in a matter of uh, seconds uh, might start crying for no apparent reason we now move on to abnormalities of perception an illusion is a misperception of a real stimulus and it is a sensory deception a hallucination is also a sensory deception but in a hallucination a perception occurs in the absence of a real external stimulus so a typical example of an illusion would be mistaking a rope that is lying on the floor in poor lighting and thinking that it is a snake we look at some types of illusions in pareidolia there is vivid visual imagery it occurs with little conscious effort while perceiving an ill defined stimulus like a fire eidetic imagery is also called a photographic memory where from a previous perception the person has vivid visual imagery and these two illusions are not necessarily pathological and they are not usually seen in clinical practice we now move on to hallucinations so based on the sensory modality hallucinations can be divided into five types the most common type seen in psychiatry is auditory hallucination hypnagogic hallucinations occur when a person is falling asleep while hypnopompic hallucinations occur when a person is waking up so to help remember you can use hypnogogic go occurs when you are going to sleep so gogic is when you are going to sleep or falling asleep while the other type pompic is when you are waking up and both tend to be auditory or visual and they are not uncommon in normal people so isolated hypnogogic or hypnopompic hallucinations are not pathological and they usually take the form of uh, hearing voices calling out one's name a functional hallucination is one that is always preceded by a particular sensory stimulus so for example hearing voices only or whenever the patient hears the tap running a reflex hallucination 
may be considered to be a, a subtype of a functional hallucination. And in reflex hallucination, the hallucination in one sensory modality occurs in response to a stimulus in another modality. For example, the patient might hear voices whenever he or she smells a particular smell. An extra campaign hallucination is one that occurs beyond the boundaries of, a, of the sensory field. So, for example, the patient might report hearing voices of someone who is living in a different city. And synesthesia refers to perceiving a stimulus in one sensory modality as a sensation in another modality. So, for example, the patient might say, I can see smells or I can hear colors. This occurs in abuse of hallucinogenic drugs like LSD. A kinesthetic hallucination is a term used to describe somatic hallucinations that involve deep structures like muscles and joints. Autoscopy is also called phantom mirror image. It refers to the experience of seeing oneself outside of oneself and recognizing that it is oneself. So it is a relatively rare phenomenon. So sensory distortions include hyperesthesia and dysmegalopsia. In the hyperesthesia, there is excessive sensitivity to sensory stimuli, especially to pain. It usually has an organic cause and is typically seen in herpes zoster. In dysmegalopsia, there is altered perception of the shape and size of objects. So the patient might perceive objects as being smaller than, you, than normal, which is called micropsia, larger than normal, which is macropsia, or the shape might appear very irregular, which is called metamorphopsia. Again, it tends to be organic with retinal brain lesions or delirium tremens being more common. And rarely in schizophrenia, this phenomenon can occur. We now move on to disorders of thought. And we'll be covering delusions, overvalued ideas, and obsessions. But we will mainly be focusing on delusions. So under delusions, we'll be looking at the definition of a delusion, different types of delusions, delusional mood, delusional perception, delusional misinterpretation, and shared delusions. So what is a delusion? A delusion is a false fixed belief that is not based on reality. It is held by the subject with conviction despite evidence to the contrary and this belief is not shared by others in the subject's subculture. Based on content, delusions can be classified into different types. Some of the common types include persecutory delusions, 
this is the most common type of delusions seen in clinical practice. They are commonly referred to as paranoid delusions. This is where the patient has beliefs that there is a conspiracy against them, that their life is under threat, that they are being followed, that they are being monitored by cameras and so on. Grandiose delusions are typically seen in mania where the patient tends to overestimate their own abilities and act on those beliefs. So a patient uh, who is not very rich might start believing that they have a lot of money and might make expensive uh, uh, purchases uh, using their uh, credit cards. Nihilistic delusion is characterized by extremely negative uh, beliefs. For example, the patient might believe that the world is going to end soon or that they are going to die soon or that they don't have certain parts of the body such as the brain or the bowel and so on. In hypochondriacal delusions, the patient is convinced that they are suffering from a major illness. Normally, hypochondriacal beliefs are not delusional. It is more of an anxiety disorder. But in severe depression, hypochondriacal beliefs can reach delusional intensity. Delusions can also be classified as primary and secondary. Primary delusions are also called autochthonous delusions and they typically occur out of the blue. They are called primary because they cannot be understood in terms of the person's previous experiences. On the other hand, secondary delusions are understandable in the context of the patient's previous experiences or already existing delusions. Delusional mood is also called delusional atmosphere. It occurs during the period a few hours to a few days before the primary delusion becomes obvious. The subject has an uncanny feeling that something strange is going on but is unable to pinpoint what exactly it is. A delusional perception is a primary delusion. It is one of the first, one of the 11 first rank symptoms. In delusional perception, there are two stages. The first stage is a normal perception. And in the second stage, the patient gives the normal perception a delusional meaning. So for example, the patient might say, I saw the traffic light turn red and so I knew that my neighbor was a spy. So the patient's perception of the traffic light turning red is a normal perception which other people in that road would also have seen. But when the patient gives this normal perception a delusional meaning, it becomes a delusional perception. And a delusional perception is different from a delusional misinterpretation in that the delusional misinterpretation is a secondary delusion. So the subject gives a delusional meaning to his experiences, either perceptual or otherwise, in terms of a pre-existing delusion. So if a patient already believes that their neighbor is a spy and then they see the traffic light turn red and then give it a delusional interpretation to support their belief that their neighbor is a spy, then it is a delusional misinterpretation. If on the other hand, if for the first time after seeing the traffic light turn red, they start believing that the neighbor was a spy, then it is a delusional perception. Uh, 
shared dilutions as the name indicates refers to dilutions that are shared by more than one person and depending on the number of people who share it it is called folia due when two people share it folia troy when three people share it and so on so these are french terms in foli imposi the dilutional belief is imposed on a dependent person by the psychotic patient and it usually happens when the psychotic patient is in a dominant relationship over the other person so in this case the psychotic patient would need treatment with antipsychotics whereas the other person on whom the belief was imposed might get better just from being separated for a period of time from the patient in foli simultaneity two or more people develop and share the delusional belief simultaneously and this is extremely rare core valued ideas are beliefs that are held with lesser conviction than delusions the preoccupation of a patient with anorexia nervosa with her weight is a typical example of an overvalued idea though in some of these patients such ideas might strengthen and become delusional beliefs that are held by members of an extreme cult group might also be termed as overvalued ideas obsessions an obsession is a recurrent intrusive inane unignorable distressing or ego dystonic thought impulse or image that arises from the subject's mind and is recognized as such by the subject obsession obsessions usually involve one of the following themes contamination doubt safety symmetry religion illness sex or violence obsessions are typically seen in ocd where they are usually associated with ritualistic behaviors called compulsions common compulsions include hand washing checking ordering and counting we'll briefly look at first rank symptoms there are 11 first rank symptoms these were one considered to be diagnostic of schizophrenia they were enumerated by a german psychiatrist named schneider they are no longer considered diagnostic of schizophrenia as they can occur in other psychotic conditions also but presence of these symptoms strongly suggests that the diagnosis is schizophrenia the first rank symptoms include both hallucinations and delusions so there are three hallucinations a third person voice or voices giving a running commentary on the patient's actions third person voices discussing or arguing about the patient thought echo which is an auditory hallucination in which the patient hears his or her own thoughts spoken out aloud you got three thought phenomena thought insertion where the patient believes that thoughts are being inserted into their mind against their will thought withdrawal where patient believes that thoughts are being taken out of their mind against their will and thought broadcast where the patient believes that they are uh, their thoughts are accessible to others as if they are being broadcast on the radio or television and then there are a set of uh, four passivity phenomena made actions made feelings and made impulses Uh, where the patient feels that 
uh, the actions, feelings and impulses are not their own, but that they are made to act or feel or have such impulses by an external agency or external person. In somatic passivity, the patient experiences uh, somatic hallucinations, which they attribute to an external agency or person. And the final first rank symptom is delusional perception, which we have already seen before. We now move on to cognition. Assessment of cognition usually involves testing orientation, attention concentration and memory. More detailed cognitive assessments would be warranted for some patients, such as those with dementia. In orientation, orientation in time, place and person is generally preserved in functional mental illnesses like depression, schizophrenia, mania, etc. Acute disorientation in the presence of clouding of consciousness such as delirium, which is an acute confusional state. In chronic disorientation without clouding of consciousness, such as dementia. Attention and concentration are terms that are used synonymously. They are tested by serial 7's test where the subject is asked to subtract 7 repeatedly from 100 or by asking the subject to spell the word world backwards. If a patient is unable to do those two tests either because they are poor at arithmetic or reading, uh, you can ask them to tell the months of the year or the days of the week backwards. Patients with mania tend to be highly distractible, while patients with depression also exhibit reduced concentration and so they might perform poorly in these tests. Registration is tested by asking the patient to repeat a name and address immediately. Alternatively, you can give the names of uh, three objects. Short-term memory is tested by asking the patient to recall the name and address or the names of the three objects after about five minutes. Testing recall of past events helps to assess long-term memory. Memory impairment usually suggests an organic cause such as dementia. It can occur in depression when it is called depressive pseudo-dementia due to a slowing of the cognitive processes. Depressive pseudo-dementia improves once the depression is treated. In dementia, long-term memory tends to be spared until relatively late in the illness. So the initial difficulty in a patient with dementia would be an inability to learn new information. Anterograde amnesia is also called post-traumatic amnesia. It is the amnesia that immediately follows an injury. The duration of post-traumatic amnesia is an important prognostic factor. The longer the duration, the poorer the prognosis. On the other hand, retrograde amnesia is the amnesia for the period that immediately precedes the insult or injury. Confabulation refers to filling gaps in memory with incorrect 
information. It is not deliberate lying. It is a characteristic feature of Korsakoff psychosis, which typically occurs in chronic alcoholics. Deja vu is a feeling of familiarity in an unfamiliar situation. Jama vu is a feeling of unfamiliarity in a familiar situation. Both of these occur commonly in healthy people, but an important organic cause is temporal lobe epilepsy. We now move on to insight. Insight may be defined as a correct attitude to morbid change in oneself. For a psychiatric patient to have total insight, he or she should recognize that they have an illness. They should attribute it to a psychiatric disorder rather than a physical disorder. They should realize the potential benefits of treatment. They should comply with the treatment and they should be aware of the potential consequences of their illness on oneself and on others. Mere compliance with treatment does not indicate good insight. We now move on to consciousness. Phenomenology or descriptive psychopathology is concerned with the description of experience. To experience something that can be described, one needs to be conscious, the only exception being dreaming. Even with that, in order to describe that experience, one needs to be awake and conscious. Consciousness may be defined as a state of awareness of the self and the environment and the level of consciousness varies from the awake state through drowsiness, somnolence and coma to death. These are some of the disorders of consciousness. Stupor clouding of consciousness, fluctuation of consciousness, oneroid or dreamlike state, twilight state, automatism, hysterical or dissociative fugue, and Ganser's syndrome. Stupor is a combination of akinesis and mutism. So the patient does not move and the patient does not say anything. It can occur in functional mental disorders and in organic conditions. In stupor, seen in catatonia occurring in schizophrenia, mania or depression, consciousness is preserved. In organic stupor, consciousness is typically impaired. In clouding of consciousness, the patient exhibits disorientation. The patient has little recall following recovery. Clouding of consciousness suggests an organic pathology. It is commonly accompanied by hallucinations. Fluctuation of consciousness also suggests an organic pathology. For example, in delirium, the patient 
tends to become more disturbed and disoriented in the evenings while being relatively lucid during the daytime. Oniroid or dreamlike state is one in which the patient is confused, disturbed, hallucinating and prone to exhibit emotions like extreme fear. The distinction from delirium is not very clear. Physical causes need to be excluded and rarely a dissociative functional mental condition may be the cause. Twilight state typically occurs in temporal lobe epilepsy. The consciousness is impaired with emotional changes and perceptual disturbances. Usually has an abrupt onset and end. The patient has amnesia for the episode and it has been used as a defense against violent acts committed by the patient. Automatism is also a feature of temporal lobe epilepsy. It occurs during or soon after an epileptic attack. Consciousness is impaired, but the patient retains posture control and performs simple and sometimes even complex movements. The patient is not, however, aware of what he is doing and has little recollection after the episode ends. Automatism has also been used as a defense against violent acts committed by the patient. Hysterical or dissociative fugue. This refers to wandering away from usual surroundings into unfamiliar areas. There is loss of personal identity in that the patient is not able to say who they are or where they are from. Even after recovery, the patient tends to have amnesia for the period of the fugue. And during dissociative fugue, the patient is able to maintain basic self-care and superficially appears to be behaving appropriately. Ganser syndrome consists of the following features. Clouding of consciousness, the so-called hysterical twilight state. The patient gives approximate answers. The German term for this is war begehen. For example, to the question, how many legs does a dog have? The patient might say five, which suggests that the patient understands the question, but instead of giving the correct answer, they give, they give an answer that is near or approximate to the correct answer. The patient may experience pseudo hallucinations. So these refers to perceptual experiences which are similar to hallucinations but are not as consistent or as well formed as true hallucinations and in pseudo hallucinations the patient tends to have insight that their experience is abnormal whereas in true hallucinations the patient tends to actually believe that there is someone who is talking to them. And there is amnesia for the episode after recovery. Ganser syndrome was originally described in prisoners awaiting tra trial. So some experts consider this to be a malingering or a lying type of disorder rather than a functional psychiatric syndrome but others consider it to be a rare dissociative disorder.
we look at some uh, interesting but rare psychiatric syndromes. Capgras syndrome, Fragoli syndrome, De Clarembault syndrome, also called erotomania, Cotard syndrome, and Othello syndrome. Capgras syndrome is a delusional disorder, though it is called illusion of doubles. The patient believes that a familiar person has been replaced by an imposter. Uh, this syndrome can occur on its own as a delusional disorder or this delusion can be part of a, another disorder like schizophrenia. For example, the patient might believe that their wife is not their real wife but an imposter who looks like their wife. The converse of this is Fregoli syndrome in which the patient identifies a familiar person in strangers. So the patient might see someone who looks like a stranger on the street but might believe that it is a person well known to them who is in disguise. De Clarembault syndrome is also called erotomania. The patient holds a delusional belief that someone else is in love with them and the object of affection is usually someone who is famous and of a much higher social standing. And this can lead to stalking initially in the form of writing letters or emails or making phone calls and sometimes even visiting the person's, the other person's residence. In Cotard syndrome is characterized by nihilistic delusions which we saw earlier. These are delusions which are highly negative. The patient might believe that the world is going to end immediately or that they are going to die soon or that certain parts of their body like their brain is missing and so on. It is typically seen in severe psychotic depression. Othello syndrome is also called pathological or morbid jealousy. In this the patient falsely believes that his spouse is being unfaithful. It usually happens in uh, males. Alcohol is a risk factor and morbid jealousy is a recognized cause of serious violence including homicide. So if a patient presents with this syndrome, uh, the risk to the spouse needs to be considered. The name is from the Shakespearean character Othello who kills his wife because of jealousy. And before we finish, we will go through five multiple choice questions. Question 1. Which of the following is not a characteristic feature of mania? Number 1. Labile affect. Number 2. Flight of ideas. Number 3. Thought block. And number 4. Pressure of speech. If you want, you can pause now and select your choice. And the correct answer is 3. Thought block. Thought block is not a characteristic feature of mania, while the other three are characteristic features of mania. Question 2. Which of the following is a first rank symptom? Number 1. Delusional mood. Number 2. Delusional perception. Number 3. Delusional misinterpretation. And number 4 delusional misidentification. If you want, you can pause now and choose your option. 
and the correct answer is number two delusional perception this is the first rank symptom while the others are delusions but are not first rank symptoms question 3 dr brown is a psychiatrist he starts assessing a patient mr smith dr brown begins by saying good afternoon mr smith i am dr brown mr smith repeats good afternoon mr smith i am dr brown what is mr smith exhibiting is it one echopraxia two echolalia three clang association or four logoclonia if you want you can pause now and choose your option and the correct answer is two echolalia echolalia is where the patient repeats what the examiner is saying in echopraxia the patient imitates the actions of the examiner so for example if the examiner scratches his head the patient will do the same clang association is a disorder of speech in which successive ideas are based on sound connections examples include rhyming and punning and it is seen in mania in logoclonia the patient keeps repeating the same syllable again and again question 4 a 52 year old unemployed lady believes that president obama is in love with her she keeps writing letters to the president and regularly calls the white house number wanting to talk to him her family say that she has never met the president in person what is the likely diagnosis is it number one capgra syndrome number two fregoli syndrome number three de clarembault syndrome or number four foley adieu if you want you can pause now and select your choice the correct answer is three de clarembault syndrome also called erotomania this is a syndrome in which the patient has the delusion that someone much more famous and of a much higher social standing is in love with them Capgras syndrome and Fregoli syndrome are delusions of misidentification while Foley adieu is where two people share the same delusion the final question this is a transcript of what a psychiatric patient said during his assessment when asked about his wife's occupation my wife works in a bank her bank manager is called mr english i never liked studying english in school i loved max what is he exhibiting is it one pressure of speech two flight of ideas three loosening of association or four punning and rhyming if you want you can pause now and choose your option and the correct answer is number two flight of ideas flight of ideas is where the patient jumps from one topic to another but there is some link between successive topics so in this case the patient starts by answering correctly that his wife works in a bank and then it moves to her bank manager and then it moves to his name which is mr english and then english becomes the link and becomes the subject english and then he moves to another subject max pressure of speech is where the patient talks very fast it is quite likely that this patient has mania and was talking fast but we can't determine that from a transcript loosening of association is seen in schizophrenia where there is no connection between successive ideas 
whereas in this case there is some connection between successive ideas and punning and rhyming is not seen here though that can also occur in mania so we have now come to the end of this presentation hope you found it useful and thank you for listening